now your main event. Introducing the hosts of Wrestling with Freddy, Jeff Dye and Freddy Prince Jr. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Wrestling with Freddy. Jeff didn't have the guts to show up today because I smoked him once again in our predictions, so you're stuck with just me. But we're going to talk some all in, where we were right, where we were wrong. There wasn't a lot of wrong. And if you're betting with me, you're making money. You're making big money, especially this weekend. So let's get right to it. All in was in London, England, as the general from Austin Powers once said. They had over 50,000 in attendance. This is kind of their WrestleMania. I'm, they probably don't like being compared to that, but this is pretty much their WrestleMania. All In was like the first event that Cody put on back in the day with all those dudes, and it was kind of like the, the introduction to Tony Khan and him going, I'll take that, thank you very much. And now all of a sudden we have AEW. It was smaller in size. They had over 50,000 people there. I think the last one was like 82,000 or some crazy number like that. But they were still dealing with the uh, Taylor Swift concert stuff. So I think what was reported is it was still the same setup. So that's why they couldn't fit any more people in there. Which lets us know that as big as wrestling is, Taylor Swift rules the frigging world. Young people love her. Moms love her. I've seen some dads loving her. My kids love her. My wife loves her. I, she's all right. You know, I don't trip out like everybody else, but I grew up listening to like gangster rap in the 90s. So that's more what I like. Anyway, back to wrestling. It was a pretty good show. I didn't tune into the pre-show until Stokely Hathaway got clotheslined by Ishii. So I wasn't feeling it as much as everyone else. And then out came Soraya with her entire family. I think they add more family members every time she comes out anywhere with her family. This time they were like 12 deep. She came out and she was pissed off, man. And and her her partner in crime, Harley Cameron, I, I believe is her name, the Aussie, was like, this show is not even going to get started. They hijacked the show, which reminds me of an old story I think I told, which was Brian Kendrick's comedy wrestling promotion locally here in L.A. They used to, they used to start the shows by hijacking them. But anyway, they hijacked the show. There will be no wrestling today. You won't get to see anything. And the reason why is because Soraya didn't get a match. She didn't get her main event match like she did last year when she won the Women's World Championship in front of her people. She's the queen. She's the queen of England, damn it, and should be treated that way. And all of a sudden, Soraya takes the mic, starts talking trash to these people, and they're hot with her, man. They're not really giving her the love. She's being the bad guy and an effective one at that. And then we hear music. And I'm going, I'm sitting there, wait, wait, what music is that? I don't even, I don't even remember this song. And then here she comes and she looks completely different. So I'm going, wait, who the, that's not. And then the announcers finally helped my dumb ass go, it's Jamie Hayter. And Jamie Hayter came down with a whole new look. I don't think it was new music. It's just been so long since she got hurt. She cleared the ring of all 47 members of Soraya's family and everyone was afraid of her, including Harley and Soraya. Harley put up a little bit of a fight, but she came out in front of her hometown as well. She's, she's a Brit as well. Got huge love, which leads me to this. Before we even get into how much I was right on this pay-per-view, oh my God, DraftKings, where are you? The women's division in AEW is very rapidly growing. And I'm not going to say it's, it's going to be better than WWE's because Charlotte Flair's coming back. And she makes the people she wrestles look even better than they than they are. Even when they're good, they look great. If they're average, they look good. If they're crappy, they look average. Like she's Charlotte Flair knows what the hell time it is. So it's hard to say that they're better. But Jamie Hader, Soraya, who can't wrestle every day, but when she does, gives a good match. And for those who don't know, she's got like major neck injuries. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Mercedes Money. Who else am I freaking? Oh, hello. The world champion and the former world champion, Tony Storm and Mariah May. will get into their match as well. Like that alone. And then forget all the people that are going to be losing, like the Sheetas and all those who are going to help be putting these over. Like they've got a serious women's division now. A, they've got a legitimately serious women's division with a lot of Brits, man. They filled it up with this international squad of like, Ones that WWE overlooked or didn't think had it. And now all of a sudden they have it. And I'm looking forward to watching women's wrestling, man. It looks, the division looks strong. 
Let's get to the show. That was the that was just the pre-show, y'all. That was just the damn pre-show. They're telling stories in the pre-show. Come on. And shout out to Renee Paquette and RJ City. They did a good job as well. Started off with some disappointing news, you guys. I was I was wrong. But give me a freaking break. I didn't know he was going to win a Casino Royale match, but I was wrong. I said the Patriarch Christian and his cohorts of the Patriarchy were going to retain and win because I I see Christian in a championship picture kind of all the time, right? Because he's one of their best dudes on the mic, one of their best storytellers on the mic, one of the best storytellers in the ring. I just He's such a solid, he's a, he's a solid citizen. So yeah, I really thought he was going to win. I was wrong. Claudio. Pack got his Britain moment. And Wheeler Yo- Yuda, Yoda, Wheeler Yuda all came in together. No Brian Danielson for Blackpool because uh, he was in the main event. So they had Pac in there. And Pac got a great moment. The crowd got big love for him. It was kind of a crazy match. It, it didn't make a ton of sense to me until Christian came in and made it make sense. And then from that moment on, the rest of the match made sense. But I love that he ran away in the beginning. I thought that was funny. But I was wrong, okay? So, you know, whatever. I'm 0 for 1. Get ready for some winners. All right, Mariah May and Tony Storm, which is probably the best story in women's wrestling right now, regardless of how you feel about the Tony Storm character. For some people, I know it's it's too dramatic, and you're asking to suspend too much disbelief in order to accept the character. For others who just accept the world that they're watching, they they love this character. They think it's the best chapter in, in Tony Storm's career. I think it's the best chapter in Tony Storm's career. And this story played out over months with Mariah May. And we've seen the protege, the fan admirer type thing before with Mickey and, and Trish back in the day with AJ and Paige. Back in the day, we're seeing it here with Mariah and Tony. But this just felt different, maybe because it's just the newest version of it. Or maybe because Tony's just stone ass crazy as a, as a character and has completely lost her marbles. <laughs> but everyone cared when Mariah May turned on Tony Storm. Everybody cared. And they didn't drag the story out. And it didn't feel too short. And it certainly isn't over. This chapter of the book is, is done. And there'll be new chapters with new people, you know, clamoring for the belt. But they announced their next big event in Australia. And that seems like a perfect time for Tony Storm to rebuild herself and take a title back. That'll be on our prediction show next year, 2025, when we have 27,000 sponsors all vying for that coveted, who will Freddie get right this week? Well, guess what? I got it right. Mariah May went over and she won. But Tony got her pound of flesh, almost literally, because she made Mariah bleed the way Mariah made her bleed. So it was blood in, blood out. I loved the match. I thought it was great. I don't do highlights anymore because y'all watch the match. You don't need my stupid highlights. I'm more a story guy anyway. I never built a match in my friggin' life. That was for the, the professionals to take care of. I just wrote the reasons why. And I liked the reason why for this match. I liked the way they, they worked. I loved that she got her blood back and made Mariah bleed for it. She said, you better be prepared to die. She tried to take her as close to death as the story would allow her to go or as, as the rating systems will allow us to go in, in the entertainment industry. So I thought it was really, really good. Great moment for uh, the English woman to go over in England, even though she was getting like great booze. She slapped her own mother across the face. Like, I don't need your support. You were never there for me. I didn't even invite you here. You shouldn't be here. Wha-pa! She didn't say any of that, but she said it in the slap. She kissed Nigel McGinnis on the head, which inspired him to take off his shirt, not in this moment, but later that night, pull out the trunks and wrestle in the Casino Royale. I think that's what they call that crazy match, which we'll actually get into because it was the first time I liked it. But it inspired him to wrestle again. Nigel McGinnis said he was, he looked freaking great. He looked freaking great. That's how powerful the smooch of the world champion Mariah May is. And she smooched him on the way up before she was even the champ. So it was tw- twice as special. He should have won that damn match. He was so inspired. But anyway, once again, your man was right. And this is going to start a trend, y'all, of rightness in my picks. So make your bets, even if they don't sponsor us. Still support them. Take care of your gambling habits in the comfort of the nest of the Federation.
by the way, if you haven't seen our Mariah May episode, every once in a while we get the 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 privilege, as uh, as a promoter once said, the privilege of having these wrestlers on and getting their stories and figuring out where they come from and what they're doing now and what they want to do next and all kinds of cool questions. So tune into that interview because it's already out there. You should check it out. She's the champ. Come on. Next up, the FTW, the For the World Championship match. That's such an asshole thing to do. Oh, that's what MJF did with the International Championship. Changed it. A-hole move. The FTW Championship match. Chris Jericho, the champion. The elder statesman with Brian Keith, the bad apple, and Big Bill, the redwood. Big Bill looking jacked, and the crowd was so hot for him, man. He'd be a world champion in England against the handsome devil, the cold-hearted. What do they call him? The cold-hearted handsome devil. Hook with the strangest start to an introduction music ever. But then the music gets cool. And then they did this, like, his entrance was like this booty shot where you just got to see the hook booty climb the stairs for a good 40 seconds. I don't know whose decision that was, but uh, maybe it was for all the ladies watching. Anyway, we got that that close-up of the hook booty going to the ring, and then we got the match. And if you don't know, there's no rules in an FTW match for the World Championship match. Jericho, his entrance was pretty wild, too. He came out and just said, if F it, I'm going to sing my song. You guys are just going to rock out to it, whether you like it or not. And I'm going to say hi, guys, in the middle of a verse, because that's just how I feel. So the elder statesman versus the young buck. No, he can't say young buck. There are young bucks versus the young warrior. They jumped on him right away, whipped his ass, softened him up. There's no rules. And his father is one of the announcers for this match. His father, who created the FTW championship, bequeathed it. That's right. I just used that word bequeathed it to his son. I'm going to say his only son. I don't know if he has more kids. His only son, Hook. And Hook used that championship, won it off Ricky Starks, respectfully, rightfully, coming up under Samoa Joe, learning the ranks, getting better every single month at the art and the sport of professional wrestling, ready to kick some ass, and it's just too much for the kid. It's too much, and it's too much for his dad to watch. And he keeps seeing all these jerks ganging up on his son, and he says, you know what? This is how it's going to be. Then this is how it's going to be. And he gets out of his seat, and he puts his Taz mission, this chokehold, and he's so wide now that it's hard for him to get his arms across his body because he's like looks like a brick wall with arms and legs and a head on top. And he puts this, the submission on, and his son puts the submission on Chris, and ha-ha, Chris Jericho taps out, and the bad apple, he goes down. The Redwood, I think, was still jacked up from some other show. Oh, yeah, he went through a table with barbed wire on it. Party on. It's not It's not an AEW match if there's not barbed wire, thumbtacks, fire, wild dogs, and a lion attack. He went through a table, and the right guy, the good guy, won and got his title back. Chris Jericho, you bastard. That's what he kept calling. You dumb bastard. Well, now who's the bastard? Jericho, he lost. He lost the match. And once again, your boy picked hook to win or to reclaim his championship. So we're two for one. You're going to, you're going to get a a strong sense of this. Next up was the tag team championship match. And I'll be honest with you guys, even though I picked this one, right, this one, this was a hard story to pay attention to. They didn't give it much more of a story than, Hey, we're the jerk EVPs and you guys suck and we don't suck, but you only have time for so much story. You got to have actual wrestling matches on a wrestling show. It can't be all script. So this one had the least amount of story, but I still picked it right. What? And so did Jeff. So he's not cowardly for that one, but you know, I whooped his ass as usual. So the winners were the Young Bucks versus FTR and the Acclaimed. And everybody loves the Acclaimed, whether you're in America or England. And they busted out a rhyme and out came daddy ass looking more jacked than everybody on both the WWE and AEW rosters combined. And he's 147 years old. And he looks like Solomon Grundy if Rob Liefeld drew him. I'm not even exaggerating. The guy's like 280 with no body fat anywhere. And I'm pretty sure I got his age right too. So the Young Bucks won. And Jeff and I, we both picked him. I'm three and one, by the way, if you're if you're counting. Next up, the American Championship match. The American champion, Maxwell Jacob Friedman versus the upstart Brit. Will Ospreay. There's no way he could beat an American for an American championship. Damn it. At least according to MJF, he can't. It's cool that they're making this belt mean something. 
it's cool that they put two top level guys for a belt that is not a top level belt to give it the type of prestige that it needs and give people a reason to fight for it because this man held it because that man held it because they wrestled for 59 minutes and 58 seconds. Like there's reasons now to fight for this belt, but, and I don't think this story is going to be over by the way. I think they're going to go back and forth for a while. I don't think MJF is going to be going after Brian Danielson's world title. Oh, spoiler. So the match started. England loves Will Ospreay. He's England's own. 40 miles from London, as the commentators put over many times. 40 miles. Everyone went crazy. He had some awesome break dancers doing some sweet flips. All the flips that all these other wrestlers said would end his career before anybody even knew who he was. Well, he's here to tell you that you were wrong. He's Will Ospreay. He's the Tom Hardy of professional wrestling. And everybody loves Tom Hardy because he was Venom. He also played twins in this weird British mob movie that was pretty cool, too. And so did Will Ospreay. You don't know. He might have. Act like you know everything about a guy's career. I know. And I told you Will Ospreay would win. And, and Jeff didn't believe me. And a lot of you didn't believe me. You said, no, somebody English has to lose in their hometown. Well, you've just seen too much WWE. And so your program, your pre-programmed, go, oh, if they're in their hometown, they're going to lose. But WWE's loosened up on that rule a little bit in the last couple of years. Wonder why. And AEW's always been pretty chill and loose about it. So once again, your boy Freddie was right. Will Ospreay gets back the international championship, the championship that it was originally known by before that son of a bitch scumbag MJF changed it. This is so disrespectful. He's a disrespectful wrestler. That's what he is. Um, who told a great story, by the way. And the fact that he didn't make himself look cool on the way up and got mad and said, they used to cheer for me before you showed up. And he allowed that kind of emotion to come out, which only puts the other guy over. I just thought it was like, I love when wrestlers do that. Because these days, a lot of it is, I'm going to no sell a lot of your insults and a lot of what you are and just put myself over. And so when you have the guts to put the other guy over, it ends up getting you over even more. And I felt made that match mean a lot. I loved this match. It was awesome. It didn't have, they don't have to do another hour long match for the rest of their lives. They got that one in the, in the book and it was pretty fantastic. This is just a great match and the right guy won once again. And the right guy always picks the winner. And that's me. winning four to one jeff's got three only three right and two wrong loser the tbs championship match this for the women's tbs championship title mercedes money with camille brick the brick house versus dr Britt baker dmd why do i sound like that guy from the simpsons when i do that voice that's weird anyway this has been another good story not as much time as the mariah may tony storm one but the return of the DMD and her truthful and honest story of what she'd been going through instantly gains you sympathy, instantly gets you fans. If anybody's gone through anything near what you've gone through or has family, like they're on your side now for friggin' life. So you're good to go. You're the good guy in this. And Mercedes Monet, who came in and Boston, her hometown as a good guy, has embraced the role of the villain. Her entrance was complete and total embracing of the villain role. She came out in a friggin' horse-drawn carriage with her little dog next to her. I think she had like a corgi or something like that. Cute little dog. And just like, it was eating it up. I mean, eating it up. So she's completely embraced the role of villain in this. So you get a true old school match, the baby face versus the heel, the good guy versus the bad guy or girl in this case, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. And they had a match, and of course, Camille gets involved. But like we said on this podcast, and Jeff even agreed with me on this one, I'm pretty sure, we didn't see the doctor winning in London. But in just a few short weeks, a couple short weeks, there's Chicago at All Out. All Out! (gasps) And in Chicago, she will win. And I don't know how she's going to get this second shot, but she's going to earn it. She's going to get it, and she will win. And you can put that on the prediction resume as well. Mercedes Monet, she went over with her finisher and put the doctor down. Um, But again, another good match with another good story behind it. Um, So we enjoyed this. Uh, Don't worry 
if you're mad that I'm not talking WWE, the Thursday episode is all WWE, where we make our predictions and talk about the stories building up to Berlin, the bash in Berlin, which takes place on Saturday, this coming Saturday. So stay tuned for Thursday show. Moving on. The TNT Championship. The coffin match with the champion Jack Perry versus Darby Allen and his pink jacket. Get a lot of heat wearing a pink jacket, but people love him. Usually that's a heel move, man. It takes guts to be a baby face and rock the pink, fuzzy, fluffy jacket. But Darby did it, which was a mistake. It was a mistake, Darby. For, for a coffin match, you never wear pink to a coffin match. You never wear pink to a funeral because it makes it all about you. And then we don't remember the fallen. We don't remember the, the lost. We don't get to have those comments. We're just looking at, why is that guy in a pink, fluffy suit? And Jack Perry was pissed at you and beat your ass, Darby Allen. Beat your ass across the ring, took a whooping two, put finally put you in a body, put him in a body bag, Johnny. Yeah. And he did. Zipped it up. If you don't know what that's from, uh, then you're just making me feel super old. But if you do, party on. Puts him in the body bag, drags him into the coffin, because you can't keep Darby down. You got to put him in a in a body bag. And this is Darby's match. This is what's well, the Undertaker's match, obviously, but in AEW, this is Darby's match. And he's done crazy coffin stuff before, which he did in this one too. But he puts him in the body bag, throws him in the coffin. Darby tries to get out. Jack doesn't let him. Slams it shut. And then here come the young bucks, you assholes. And they coming out with a can of gasoline, reminiscent of how Darby was going to burn up Jack Perry at the previous pay-per-view. And they come out and they cover Darby in gasoline. They're not going to burn him up. Oh, there's a false bottom for sure. No, it fell off of that earlier. So now there's no false bottom. Darby's in there. He's covered in gas. They cover the coffin in gas. They're about to light it off fire. And whoosh, all the lights go on. And everybody already knows. Everybody already knows. But then the lights come back on. And the music starts and you hear the Tony Schiavone famous. It's Sting. It was an extra long. And he comes out with the baseball bat and everybody's scared of Sting with a baseball bat. And he saves Darby's life because his commentary put over and let us know. He said, I'll always watch over you, Darby. It was weird seeing how humongous Sting is next to those dudes, by the way. Like, he still looks ready to go. Like, he's so... I forget when I was a kid how big Sting was, but it, he's he looked like a like twice of each of the dudes in the ring. It was crazy. Anyway, Sting's a friggin' man. Moving on, the Casino Gauntlet match. I don't think I don't think any of us made a pick on this. The Casino Gauntlet match, which we did not make a pick on, and I'll be honest with you. I have always hated this match. I have never understood it. Even when I understood the rules, I still was like, wait, what? How are these guys going to tell a story if there's no time limit set? Like it could be 30 seconds. How do you tell a story in 30 seconds before and get yourself over before the next dude comes out and their job is to get themselves over. So it was always a weird match to me. And then I saw this one. And everybody told a story. And commentary was prepared to put over everyone's story. They gave Nigel McGinnis a reason to be in the match. And it wasn't because Mariah May smooched him and inspired him. That's just me being a dumbass. He hates Brian Danielson. Nigel. He hates him. The winner of the Casino Royale match gets an opportunity at the champion on the off chance that the veteran Brian Danielson can somehow pull off a victory against Swerve Strickland. Nigel wants to be the one to dethrone him. And to prove that everything he's been saying about Brian is dead on and not just a biased a-hole opinion. And I thought that was so smart that they gave this old guy a reason to fight. It was like Jimmy Connors in the in the 80s Wimbledon when he like made a run all the way to the quarterfinals before eventually falling short. But you believed in the old guy for a little while, in the crafty veteran. And Nigel made you believe in this. And then out comes Christian again and screwed it up for everybody. But I'll 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 be honest, I thought Adam Page was gonna win based on some commentary and then he was going to make a move on swerve and brian in that match but no christian cage got the victory with some help from a, a recently berated luchasaurus or kill switch sorry poor poor guy just got berated in the trios match and he wanted to make amends with his father the patriarch christian and he helped him get the win 
And so everything's good in the patriarchy. You guys don't have to worry about them breaking up. Everybody knows their place and nobody's, nobody's, uh, you know, speaking out of turn or thinking, have, having plans above their station, as they once said in Red Dead Redemption 2. Moving on. The World Championship. Swerve, the champion Strickland, with Prince Nana, who does the sweet dancing, versus Brian Danielson. It's the final countdown. I hope we're legally allowed to do that. Coming out to the music that uh, many people hoped he would come out to. Tony Khan did not let anyone down with this. Both men had, everybody had cool entrances. I didn't talk about everyone's entrances, but they didn't give everyone the gimmick entrance, entrance, which was nice. They saved that for particular reasons and each one felt motivated. Like the Mercedes Monet one felt much more motivated to have her come out in something special and elegant than, you know, the blue collar Britt Baker, right? They, that just wouldn't make sense. So I thought they did a great job with that. And this match was no exception. And this was my career versus your belt. And as a lot of you remember, I was convincing myself that Swerve was going to win this match. And it was Jeff who changed my mind and made me believe. And then once I saw that Brie Garcia was in London, this was like three days before, before All In, when they, when they arrived there, we follow each other on Instagram. Ugh, duh. I saw that they were out there. I was like, oh shit, he's not bringing his family out there to watch him lose. He's winning. And I felt great about the pick all of a sudden. So we got to watch this match and sure as shit, even though he bled. And when Brian Danielson bleeds, it is hard to watch because that dude, believe, he must have the thinnest blood in all of professional wrestling because it bleeds. At least like Mariah May is dried up. Brian Danielson is still bleeding. This is this podcast is coming out three days after the match. He's The man is still bleeding. Got that thin blood. But he won the match. Just an amazing match. And now his story is how much longer? How much longer is he going to be in the game? How much more time does he have? How much more motivation does he have? Is the, is, does he feel young again and inspired? Has he secretly signed a contract and we don't even know it? Was this all a work and story? Because everything counts in these days, as our man Sam Roberts says. Everything counts. Everything matters. Everything means something. And usually that's just reserved for WWE, but AEW's been caught a few times as well. But yeah, so I don't know what his future is going to be. I don't know who's next for him outside of Christian, but somebody's going to sneak in there in, in between. But once again, once again, even though Jeff had to talk me off the swerve ledge, seven and one, you guys, seven and one on the pay-per-view. Those are the numbers that I just did for you. You need to listen to this podcast because I worked in this business. I got insight. I know how these stories work most of the time. Sometimes I get it wrong. But you got to follow these picks. Don't listen to Jeff. Don't listen to producer Alex. All right. These guys, you know, they pick with their hearts and their, their soul, their spirit, you know, who they really believe in. And I'm picking with my head. I'm picking with my head just for you guys, always. Stay tuned. Thursday's unsanctioned. You're stuck with just me. And again, he's probably so scared and ashamed of his performance this week on picks that he doesn't even want to pick for the bash in Berlin. But I do because I got the guts and I'm here to make y'all money. So stay tuned for unsanctioned Thursday. Also, leave us reviews. I'll read them on the air, even if they're mean. I don't get mad at you, but Jeff will. If they're nice, they have party on, everybody wins. But you can win no matter what. If you write us a cool review and it catches our producer's eye, it'll get read on here. So stay tuned for Thursday. That's tomorrow's show. On behalf of Jeff, who's not here, and our awesome producer, this is Freddie Prince Jr. Sam Peace. This has been a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.